All right, folks, so we're going to look at this example. And in this example, we are interested in solving for the nodal voltages. So if you look into the circuit, you see that you have nodal voltages V1, V2, V3. And you can see that you have a dependent current source here, and you also have a, an independent voltage source over here. Something else you have to look at is those resistors are given in terms of the conductances, in terms of their conductances, because the value of those resistors are given in Siemens. So basically, what that means is when we want to solve for the nodal voltages, we have to use Ohm's law that describes the current in terms of the conductance. So we can say that I equals G times V. So I is not V over R here. I, the current, is G, that is the conductance, times V. Uh, the rest of the problem will be very straightforward. So in this particular example, we have a voltage source equals to 6 volts that's connected from V3 to ground. So right away, I would state that the voltage at V3 will equal to 6 volts. This is given to us, so I don't need to worry about V3 anymore because I know the voltage at V3. And because I have a dependent current source here, I need to define its dependent parameter. So the dependent parameter of the dependent current source is IY, which is the current going through this to Siemens resistance. And I can define the current going through this resistor to be V3 minus V1 times the two ohms. So when we, when we describe IY, we can say that IY will equal to two, that's the two Siemens, times V3 minus V1, but I already know V3 to equal to six volts, so when I substitute for V3 to be equal to six volts, what I will have is 12 minus two times V1. So this is basically the IY parameter that defines this current source. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna come to node V1 so at node V1, again, I assume all the currents leave in the node. So if you look at this node, you're going to see that all the currents are leaving the node. And I will start with the current going through the 2 ohm resistor. So I'm sorry, the 2 Siemens uh, resistance or conductance. So I would say that it will equal to 2 times V1 because the current going through this conductance right now is V1 times the conductance itself, so it will be 2 times V1. Then I will go through the current going through this conductance, which is V1 minus V2 times 1, or basically I will say plus 1 times V1 minus V2. So that's what I have here. Then I will have the current leaving through this resistor or conductance. This will be V1 minus V3 times 2, or I can say over here to be plus 2 times V1 minus V3, and V3 we know that it is equal to 6 volts. So the 6 volts here stands for V3. Those are all the currents leaving this node, so that should equal to 0. So what we do next is we organize the terms for the V1 and the V2 terms and anything, any constant that we have, we're going to move it to the other side of the equation. So this means that we're going to have 5V1 because I have 2 plus 1 plus 2 is 5. I only have V1 occurs once, which is minus 1, so I have minus V1. And then the 2 times minus 6 give me minus 12. When I take it to the other side, it becomes plus 12. So basically, you organize your variables, and this is your first nodal equation at node V1. So now we're going to move to this node at V2. And at V2, again, we're going to sum all the currents leaving the node. So the first thing we're going to look at is the current 
leaving through this one ohm conductance and what we will have here is v2 minus v1 times 1 or basically 1 times v2 minus v1 the current leaves will be v2 minus v1 times the conductance then I will go through this conductance which will give us <clears throat> no I'm sorry then I will go through the current source here and the current source here is basically 1.5 times IY and when I do that what I will have is 1.5 times IY and IY is given to us to be 12 minus 2 times V1 so I will have plus 1.5 times 12 minus 2 I1 finally I will have the current leaving through this uh, conductance and the current leaving through this conductance will be 2 times V2 minus 6 V2 minus the voltage here which is 6 and I multiply it by this conductance so the sum of all those should equal to 0 the sum of the currents leaving V2 equals 0 then I'm gonna group the variables for V1 and V2 so over here V1 happens I get here minus V1 then minus 3 times V1 and that's it so that will be minus 4 times V1 and then for V2 I have plus 1 plus 2 that gives me plus 3 V2 and I have 1.5 times 12 that gives me 18 minus 2 times 6 that's 12 so I have 18 minus 12 that will be plus 6 on this side when I take it to the other side it will give me minus 6 so now I have two equations two unknowns I can solve for V1 and V2 and when I solve for V1 and V2 I have V1 to be 1.636 volts and V2 will equal to 2.727 volts so this is an example where we can use the conductances instead of the resistors to solve for the nodal voltages so uh, good luck uh, to you on the exam and hopefully this example will help you thank you